Hi viewers, uh, I'm gonna take you on a quick tour after uh, it's January now, the 23rd. This will be the, my second year building this food forest. I kind of started in the winter time and uh, here I am. So I just wanted to kind of point out that the front part of the property is mainly the, the animals and that is my mom and dad's uh, chores and that's what they do. They kind of take care of that stuff. So when we get up to here, this is their paddock, the goat paddock. When we get up to here, there's a fence line and right from here over, starts becoming like my plot or my food forest. So I have my uh, chain uh, sawmill here, or excuse me, my uh, sawmill here. And uh, I put it in here because I use a lot of wood and uh, I, I had a different project when I was, uh, before I had the farm, I was gonna do some logging and make some life edge furniture. I've done a few things like that, but I haven't got time to get back to it right now and, and I'll get back to it later. But now I just use it for mostly lumber purposes. So this is where my, uh, Rose hip mazes. Kind of doesn't look like nothing. It's a lot of drabiness. It says brown and, and it's mostly brown, barely any green. And then we get up to the greenhouse here, which is uh, 26 by 71 feet long. It's about 15 and a half feet high to the middle. And then we have the right side, which is what we did last week, last couple of weeks here. We were doing the hard prune, so that's a pair right there. And this is my uh, this is the side that I'm going to put all the chestnuts on. Because it's close to the pine, uh, the pine has uh, like an acidic ground to it, which is good for nuts for growing. So we're gonna get the chestnuts all up in here, nice little area, right? It's all opened up here. And then we got the, uh, the ponds. Two ponds, I got kind of two ponds. There's a story behind that. I built the small pond just to have a pond. And then my brother said, why don't you just make it bigger? So it kind of stuck in my head for a little while and I kind of just said, okay, let's do it. And I did. So now I have two big ponds with, which apparently has a lot of goldfish in it. Um, there's a lot of goldfish uh, and another type of fish from the, uh, the runoff creek. I'm not kind of sure what those yet are. Um, we should find out eventually. Again, we're back down here. This is where it kind of drains out. Uh, it has a natural drain. Um, just coming out this way and down my neighbor's property, which is kind of ditchy, like right down into back into the water uh, runoff. This was the lowest part of the property. So I just used to flood every year and get really soft. So all I did was just carve it all out and let the water actually collect and make it go where it's gonna go. So yeah, we got some pecans over here up on the mounds. Those are pecans right there. It's just a shade tree I kept around. I didn't want to kill all the trees. Although I still have a few more I gotta take out. Again, more chestnuts, but these are the ones I started in the summertime. These are American, Japanese, and a mix down here, and I forget which one it is. I'll have to get back to you on that. Um, actually, let's walk up to it and find out. I think there's a tag on it. So this is a graft. There it is, it's a Lockwood. That's right, Lockwood chestnut graft. Um, so yeah, we needed, you need a couple of different ones, uh, varieties in order for them to cross pollinate. So, uh, I definitely, I have some in the fridge right now, stratifying and they're looking okay. So we'll be doing a video shortly on them. Uh, edible chestnuts, of course. I don't really want anything that's kind of decorative is, uh, I like decorative and I'll keep it if it's already here, but I don't probably won't add it. It's a crab apple tree, which pollinates all my apple trees. I believe it's a, a white crab apple. And I have these walnuts here. Now these ones are gonna go because I'm gonna probably bring the wall, all the nuts up to this area. Just over here is a mound that goes down into the creek or the runoff. And uh, all of this will be chestnuts eventually. I'm gonna be probably even be pulling out those sumacs at one point, but there's no point of doing it now until it's time. So yeah, we can get down here to our other higher prune. This is where the road's gonna go down here, straight through the some bushes and stuff. But again, you know, got other priorities to work on. I've been working a lot on the greenhouse. And we got our hard pruned pears right here that we did. This one was my first one on the right on the left here. It was the first one I did. And it came out pretty good in the spring. It came right back. And this one here, I may have taken a little too much off it, but she'll probably live anyways. They're pretty resilient when it comes to a pear. And then we got our pumpkin patch down in here. We slowly been trying to work on it's uh it's a neglected project um, as far as I'm concerned. I have some uh, 
some of the uh, cuttings that we took from all these uh, hard prunes are all back in the line and on the side there. I'm not going to go over there because it's kind of mucky. So it's it's really kind of nice. I know everything's really brown. I know it's hard to show. I want to show you some color. There's some color, but those are tarps. Um, but yeah, okay. So these are my other trees. These are some of my first trees that I got from Ed Chardulos. He, uh, he hooked me up. Um, I ended up getting a fairly decent deal, at least what I thought was. So I think we got a, that's an apple, plum, or sorry, yeah, that's, that, that's, a, this is a cherry, that's a plum, and then I think this, that's a plum, no, excuse me, I got that wrong, let's back up again, okay, so that's the cherry, that's a cherry, and then that's a plum, and then this one at the end is a plum and see they're kind of crisscross like I have them I have them arranged to go kind of opposite right so when the Sun comes through not one tree is directly in front of the other one because this this way is facing uh, north so we want the east to west and and the light to come back at us which is what it does so it'll come straight through here and then touch all the trees that are not blocking each other and then we get to the other side here. I want to add more pawpaws over on this end. And a lot of things, there's just so much to do. Can't do it all, so I just have to do it over the years. And this is my built up berm fence over here. Almost like a, I forget what they're called. The ones from Africa that they would put on a boma. So they're just all prickly trees. So we do have another walnut here, but it's going to be probably in the way of the road. There's this walnut over here that's right close to my asparagus and this large prune that we did which is a pear it's going to eventually start to affect it um and we've got the other guild right in front of that which is an apple and a pear guild right near the composter there so i'm just gonna zoom up there a little bit and we'll show you some more yeah i thought it turned out pretty nice this hard uh hard prune on this one I got big expectations for this one. We'll see. This one here I left alone. I just left it alone this year. There's not enough sprouts on it. I want to train up some of the stuff that's a, that can grow in the bottom and uh, really, really cut that right off. So I'm probably just going to let that just go and do its thing and use it as fodder. I also used a lot of those apples for the composter. So maybe I'll even get some apple seeds growing in there. Who knows? Anyways, back here to the vegetable garden. All I did was cover up. I have to get some more compost put in these before I plant next year. Um, this one here doing its thing. Uh, just leaves and straw. So, yep. Water tower doing okay so far. I still have to put in the cross members. I know I got a couple comments for that. Just put a couple of braces in there. Just haven't got back to it. It's pretty sturdy as it is right now. And it's also empty. So, We'll make sure we get that done in the spring or before spring. Um, this is one of my favorite guilds right here. It's the big horseshoe guild. I'm still building up these nursery logs a bit. I'd like to have a nice big nursery log bed. So, and if you don't know what nursery logs are, they're basically just logs that are uh, filling the ground near the plant with nutrients and uh, as it breaks down and bugs find their places. This is some of the mounding I did. I think I forget, I forget if this is a blackberry. I think it is. But uh, yeah, I mounted them up so that I can turn this into maybe three plants next year or this spring. I can't wait. I'm counting the days. It's January, then February, and then March, which is spring break, which means spring is around the corner. We can get going. We got more light, more mounding. Again, it just goes down in here and then back into my. Uh, my pond again and I have one main swale that covers all of this all of this hillside is is a swale basically it comes straight down this hill and collects right at the end right there and then the other part is that there's an actual dug swale here which goes into this pond um, but yeah it's it's open here and it catches all the groundwater from both sides because this happens to be the little spot right up to the fence line which also grabs some of the farmer's land but it's a little lower so I only get some from him but I, I get all of this hillside from all the way down that path goes in there and collects there and then comes down the swale so I do get quite a bit of water most of the time 
but uh, when it's uh, when it's dry, it's dry. Here I just got some uh, covered fruit trees. I forget if they are. I can name them all. I have about uh, I don't know five or six different types of apples, um, and I will be collecting more. Especially this year is my year to put in. Once the greenhouse is done and big projects are over, I can get back to my propagating uh, the chestnuts. Of course, I got my uh, hazelnuts right here in here so i got hazelnuts pecans on the property we're gonna get chestnuts we already have hickories um yeah i even have black walnut a lot of it too so we have a, a couple of different cherries uh haven't got any sour cherries yet we have one in the front yard that's about 30 years old but it's uh, seen its day looks like it's near its end of its life and the birds really do get to those almost right away before we ever get a chance so and here's just my little my grape trellis which is doing really well i let them grow this year no pruning i just kind of well they're going to see what they do this year and really try to get that going i have a lot a few other grapes that i did some propagating i'll probably try to leave that video um but yeah there was uh they were so easy to propagate it was ridiculous the roots on them were crazy so growing grapes folks just get one let it grow for a year cut it all the cuttings you need and you could probably uh, quadruple it, uh, how many you have. So here I got that raspberry that's doing well. Um, I really like those raspberries. This is my favorite nectarine right here. Uh, she's doing well. She's got just about in the spring, we'll do probably a little bit of a pruning to open that up a little bit because that's where the center is going to be. And then we're hitting the left side again. And this is another path way over here. We're just, uh, this was the original path that we're on. But over there is where the road is. You can see where the snow is. There's like a path in there. And that's also where I put my maple trees. So I've been putting up maple trees on this side and nuts on the opposite side. Because the nuts are acidic, uh, the maple trees will not grow very well around walnuts. Eventually the walnut will overtake it because of the jug loan and uh, the buildup. So we're going to separate that. So here we did another the leaning tower of pear here. We did that little cut. I didn't go crazy on this. I was going to do more, but it's fine. Let's see what it does when it comes back in the spring. I'm fully confident that they'll come back. The, the very first hard prune I did came back really well. It's the smaller tree down there that I, I, I only left one branch on each one. And you're supposed to do 30% a year per prune. So you prune once a year, 30%. You don't want to go much more than that. It shocks the tree and does all kinds of bad stuff bad things can happen but these are also pear they're a little bit more resilient they uh they can take a little more abuse than most some trees like i wouldn't want to do that to a pawpaw it would probably just kill it uh, or even a cherry again just maples up and down here well, i lost one in the snow it uh it bent it right over and crushed it so that sucks so i'm gonna have to get rid of these walnuts right here this is like a future right here is the future spot for my home i would like to have my own barn style home loft a little bigger a little 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 taller um, nicer view that kind of thing but you know maybe someday when youtube makes me a star so don't forget to uh, hit that thumbs up down there and that uh, subscribe button tell your friends if you like these videos because i'd like to keep making them and I'm going to try and get a tripod soon so I can stop shaking the camera as much as I am trying to show you all this and maybe I can get my pretty face in there. So yeah, uh, again, just these are a couple of shade prickle trees. There was no reason to take them down yet. We need shade out here once in a while in the summer to kind of escape the sun. This is our center pair. This one here I liked a lot too. This one produced so much for the last two years. It was doing great. Now we just killed, crushed it. We just took out everything that was upright and wrong. We took the dead one out. It's going to get so much light this year. It's going to be hard to keep up on those water sprouts. I'm going to have to cut them off. But yeah, we'll be taking these logs and using them down in the garden. Everything gets recycled here. And we've been feeding all the branches and the bark to the, uh, to the goats. They like to have something to nibble on. So there you go. Now we're on the, uh, technically this would be the front side, but it's actually the back side of the the rose hip maze see i put the posts up here and that's about it really um as you can see we're back to the greenhouse again and i got a lot to do there's a lot of space still to cover 
um, you know, keeping up with all these weeds and stuff like that. And really, I'm just trying to get it to the point where I can just run a lawnmower through most of it. Um, but there's a lot of like small stumps, branches, and whatever. And that's it. So thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. I just wanted to add a little bit more. I kind of forgot the rest of the food forest here, which is if you just go past here. Um, we also have this side too. This is my uh, worm tea composter there. I just collect uh, worm tea off it when I put the uh, manure and let it let it get down there. It's come down a lot. This is my Hazcap and Berry Hillside. I know there's probably a lot of comments about why I did it this way. But this way, I, I did it this way because there's runs down the hill. And I always had plans to have collection of water up here. And I'm just going to allow the water to come down into a spray. Or I'll put a hose down the middle and just put some uh, sprinklers or something like that. Um, definitely a way to water it. And uh, yeah, I have gooseberries, blueberries. These are hazcaps in this one here. And again, this year is my year to propagate. So I'm going to try and duplicate everything that I have strawberries raspberries um, yeah so you can see I have plenty of these I have wild raspberry on the end over here I this is my little garlic uh, experiment here I had some of the uh, bulbules from the garlic and I just uh, put them down in there and see if they'd sprout and uh, it is what it is so we'll see what happens <laughs> probably just grow some good weeds um, and that's it. I just wanted to kind of toss that in there because I wanted you to see this this hillside. I know I didn't put swales on it like I could have. I could have put the uh, zigzag swales, slow down the water. But what I wanted the water to do is actually come down this hill and go into the, the pond. And originally I was going to use the pond to irrigate, but I use up so much water, there's no way. So we'll be using a tote and rain collecting method up here as opposed to that. And we'll get into that when we get closer to that project because right now it's just a dream keep dreaming